Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of Harley Quinn is... Oh, wait. No, they changed it. <clears throat> Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey is... I, well, I didn't watch that movie, so I, I guess I don't know. So, uh... <clears throat> Birds of Yay, the bippity boppity breaking free of Harley Davidson is secretly a pretty good movie. Secretly because no one is watching it because no one has ever cared about the Birds of Prey. They're like the off-brand Frosted Flicks of superhero teams. Like, I mean, they're they're good, but you know what I really want. That being said, though, this is a pretty good movie. As far as DC movies go, I'd probably rank it up there with Wonder Woman. First things first, I gotta talk about the name change. Now, I like the original name, but that's probably only because I'm a dirty weeb who watches bad anime based off of light novels with ridiculous names like Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Or Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai? Or Sword Art Online? I just think it's hilarious that DC mishandled another one of its properties for a movie, and in a panic, someone in a boardroom said, Duh, uh, shit, change the name, then people will watch it. So, I should say, I don't really like Harley Quinn. She's just been Joker's annoying girlfriend slash punching bag for most of my life, and although I dig the new 52 redesign and the new Harley animated show looks pretty funny from the ads that they keep shoving down my throat on Instagram, I really didn't have any strong feelings for or against her. But this movie kind of made me a fan. Alright, I'm going to try to keep this one short. So first, the bad. This movie is a lot like Deadpool, and I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. But I am over fourth wall breaks, and having a snarky, pseudo-crazy character look into the camera and deliver one-liners like their Jim Halper just feels lazy at this point. The second thing this movie shares with Deadpool is a weird-ass story structure. Harley does this thing where she narrates the first third of the story out of order because she's so quirky and crazy, but this movie handles its unconventional plot structure a lot less cleanly than Deadpool. In Deadpool, the highway scene sort of just feels like set dressing for expositional flashbacks. But in this movie, it sort of feels like when you ask a six-year-old to tell you a story, and they jump from the beginning to the end and then back to the middle as they remember details they forgot to tell you. So at one point in the movie, one of the characters has this scene that's interrupted abruptly by an explosion caused by Harley. And then later on in the movie, that same character has a scene that's interrupted by an explosion caused by Harley. Now I know this sounds kind of nitpicky, but it feels like the writers couldn't figure out how to end her scenes because she's not very fucking interesting, so they just wrote down, uh, and then something blows up. Now, I love Margot Robbie. She's a great actress, and, uh, <clears throat> she's got other assets. But every now and then, that Jersey accent just ain't hitting, Chief. I love the fights in this movie, but we'll get to that. What I don't love is that several times in this movie, the bad guys would run up with guns on the heroes when they only had baseball bats and hammers and not shoot them. But you can just shoot them. Just shoot them. No, don't run up to her. Just shoot her. Stand, shoot her. Guys! Now, this last one is just me, but I'm so fucking tired of fake fun soundtracks. You know what I mean? Where instead of like a score, a movie just has a playlist of popular hits. Now, I blame Guardians of the Galaxy for this phenomenon, but in that movie, it makes sense. It's done well, and there's an in-world reason for it. But now, it feels like every movie has this kind of soundtrack, and they're trying to trick me into having a good time. Like, guys, putting Earth, Wind, and Fire in a movie isn't going to cover up your bad fucking writing. But like I said, I don't think this movie is really bad at all. So, let's talk about the stuff I do like. I think this movie makes some really great directorial choices. Early on in the film, there's this beautiful slow motion scene of an egg sandwich being made. Now, I'm a cook, so I'm a sucker for food porn. But that scene quickly transitions into a chase scene of Harley through the streets of the city as she tries to save her precious, freshly made sandwich. God, that was sort of a tongue twister. Freshly made sandwich. Precious, freshly made sandwich. Precious, freshly... As she's running through the city, all of these people that she's pissed off keep popping up in random places trying to attack her until basically this mob of beat up dudes is chasing her around. The entire scene is hilarious and cartoonish and fits perfectly with the dark comedic tone of the movie. Now, although I might not like the fact that a police station full of armed cops couldn't take out one clown lady, the visuals in this scene are fucking amazing. Giving Harley glitter filled shotgun shells was a stroke of fucking genius. In general, the fight scenes in this movie are so much fun. 
They're well shot and choreographed, and thank God this movie is rated R, so Harley can break legs in the most fantastically gross of ways. I mean, there are multiple knee shots in this movie that made me crawl up into my seat with excitement. Maybe the graphic breaking of bones shouldn't excite me as much as it does. I should probably go talk to someone and make sure I'm not a serial killer. Speaking of psycho killers, Ewan McGregor is fucking incredible as Black Mask. He was so good, in fact, that it wasn't until two days after the movie when I was halfway through squeezing out a steamer that I was like, hey, is that Ewan McGregor? Movies these days are flooded with flamboyant, crazy villains. But Ewan brought this childlike immaturity to the role that was only made more compelling when paired with Victor Zaz's co-signing and coddling. Honestly, Obi-Wan does not get enough awards for his acting ability. Now, one thing I've never seen done in any Harley Quinn media that I loved in this movie is that several times, Harley would do these high-speed psychoanalyses of other characters, all Sherlock Holmes style, because she has a PhD in psychology. It's implied a lot in Harley Quinn's stories that when she fell into the chemicals, she caught the big dumb, but she didn't. She's still a PhD, and I love that they don't take that away from her in this film. So there's this scene towards the middle of the movie where Black Canary is confronted by a boring cop lady, and she has this short but very emotionally intense monologue. And let me tell you, it is fucking great. Actors on screen with no extra bullshit, just monologuing and really emoting, is my secret fucking kink. Please, please give me actors looking at other actors and acting. I will pay you whatever you want for that shit. This movie don't do a lot of character work, but when it does do it, I really like it. So you know that fight scene that they kept showing you clips of in the trailers? The one where they're like in a circus and Harley's on rollerblades? Well, she didn't have them on five seconds before, and she only puts them on for this chase sequence later on. But I'm watching her roll around going, when the fuck did she put those on? And as soon as that thought popped into my head, one of the other characters looks at her and goes, when did she put those on? I love that stuff. I love when a character in a movie directly addresses a plot point that is actively ridiculous. Movies can make me completely okay with ridiculous out of place plot points by just having another character in the movie go, damn, that's fucking ridiculous. I guess it's probably because it's like the movie making fun of itself or being super self aware and that shit just gets me. Most importantly, the casual feminism in this movie is really great. The metaphor of four women from different walks of life who have all been shit on banding together to defend a young girl is a metaphor that is not lost on me. And that's about it. Listen, I'm not telling you this is the film of the year, but for a funny DC action movie, it's pretty fun. Whatever the fuck they decide to name it. Hip Hop Harley and the Birds of Bay get a C- from me.